Welcome to the second Battle of the Dunes in Namibia. In this unique off-road driving challenge, drivers tackle some of the highest dunes in the world, and they also learn about vehicle recovery, get to see awesome places, and generally just have a blast of a time. The competitors headed to the famous Dune 7 complex for their first introduction to the Namib. However, event organizer Werner Scarp started proceedings off on a slightly smaller scale. Two-wheel drive quads are not exactly two-ton 4x4s, but they need the same principle to ride in the sand. So the quads were not only a lot of fun, but also served a practical purpose. The competitors then checked into the Laberville community camp near the Roichron settlement. This would be their base for the next few days. It was time to add some sponsor stickers from Tough Dog Suspensions, Opposite Lock 4-Wheel Drive and Vehicle Accessories, Expat Rescue, Snowmaster Fridges and main sponsor Vigo. Next, the 4x4's tyres had to be deflated. Before we get stuck into the action, let's meet our drivers. My name is Louis Oberoza. Um, I'm from Wolfish Bay, I live here, work here, and it's my first battle of the dunes. Quite excited, don't know what to expect. Let's see what happens. Okay, I have a Mitsubishi Triton, it's a 2008 model, 3.5 V6, free flow exhaust system, suspension and motor and tires, and I hope that the petrol and the power would come through to help us in the dunes. I'm Anton Werdenstein, I'm from Fairland, Johannesburg. And uh, I heard of the Battle of the Dunes, it's my first one. And I think it's gonna be awesome. I've got a Jeep Cherokee CRD 2.8. And uh, it's got an Ironman suspension with a two inch lift kit. I hope it's got enough power to tackle these dunes in the Namib Desert. Uh, my name is Charles Kepers. I'm from Tavazimbi in Limpopo. It's a bit far from here, and this is my first time at the Battle of the Dunes. I'm driving a Jeep five-door. Um, it's a normal standard suspension with bigger wheels, and I hope really it gives me more traction in the dunes. Okay, I'm Lofty de Toei. Um, I'm born and bred in Namibia. My vehicle is a, a Jeep Cherokee 1996 model and it's got a straight six engine in it with an automatic gearbox. And uh, I did a little bit of a suspension lift just to get it off the ground a little bit. And then I fitted 31 inch um, Bridgestone dealer motor and tires. And yes, let's give it a go. Right, with the details in the bank, let's go sandblasting. As the lads from specialist desert adventure company, Uri Adventures, lead the convoy out of the Lorberville camp to challenge one. But before they started tackling some really tough challenges, it was time to get jiggy with some smaller heaps of sand, just to get into the swing of things. The first little test comes up, and the Jeep Wrangler, the Jeep Cherokee Diesel, the Mitsubishi Triton, which does sound rather splendid, the Jeep Cherokee XJ, and organizer Werner Scarp's Jeep Wrangler V6 easily make it up this small dune. But the desert is no ordinary sand pit, as some of the drivers are about to find out. Anton Burdenstein is about to become the desert's first victim. He gently ambles down the slope, but a tight angle in the bowl results in no momentum and stuckness. After five attempts, the diesel Jeep is finally through. Yep, in the soft desert sand, momentum is your bestest pal. First time in the dunes with the auto box. And, uh, but yeah, first time lucky I got out. <laughs> right, so let's see if Lofty in the older XJ, which also has an auto gearbox, fares better. He also runs out of steam on the first attempt. And the second attempt. But third time lucky, as Lofty uses plenty right foot to power the XJ up the dune. Time for the Triton to do the business, but it also runs out of momentum on the first attempt. Louis gives the V6 plenty of stick for the second run, and over he goes. And lastly, we have the long wheelbase Wrangler, and driver, chart, and the Jeep handle that quite brilliantly. 
But just around the corner, Anton's Jeep Cherokee decided to take a break by lying down on its belly in the sandsum. After Uri legend Johnny extracted the Jeep, a problem is quickly identified. The tires were inflated to one bar. Deflating the tires to 0.8 bar was a game changer, reckons Anton. It's challenging, but you learn every day. The more we go, the more we learn, I guess. <laughs> we are here for the first challenge. You must go down, steep hill up, turn, come down, sharp turn, come up and stop at the top. So we've got a few guys battling, and this is what we do and tell it as a battle. The first customer is Louis, with Werner providing moral support and wisdom in the passenger seat. And he's over. That's a good start to Louis's campaign to win this thing. Chart and the long wheelbase Wrangler, powered by the older 3.8 litre V6 engine, are next. And he doesn't get there. He tries again. again. Oh dear, time for a quick visit to the shops. After the break, we find out if Chart makes it through this one. We're back in the Namib Desert where Chart Skierpers and his Jeep have been having a particularly tough time on the first big challenge. But he's a man with a plan. I will try it again. I'm no fun. <laughs> Tire pressure bit off. And I'll try it again. Right, so let's see how Chart goes now. After all those practice runs, he still sits very close to that steering wheel. Maybe he was a NASCAR racing driver in a previous life. But up and over he goes. Now just the last climb. Ah, he was just too slow there and bogs down again. He finally makes it through and that's a lot of sand driving lessons learnt in a short space of time. Lofty is up next in the straight 6 XJ. He lives in Namibia and is used to driving in sand. And up the XJ goes on the first part of the test, no worries. And up goes the XJ on the second June too. The more mature XJ is kicking sand in the newer Jeep's eyes here. The turbo diesel powered Cherokee heads down the dune next. But the Cherokee runs out of steam far from the crest. It's not going so well for this Jeep so far. After giving up on this particular climb, Anton is visibly a little bit shaken and stirred. Frightening, I'm shaking. But I've got a good co-pilot here and he's teaching me the right ways. This is the second challenge for the day. The first one went very, very well. The guys are picking up. Let's see what they're going to do with this challenge. This is the second obstacle, as Chart is now demonstrating. Navigate between a few big moulds of sand without losing momentum, then scale a dune. No man, Chart, you're supposed to go up there. So let's try again. Navigate between those moulds of sand at a good speed, then drive up the... Chart, please man, we need to show the viewers. Right, so third time lucky with Chart and co-pilot Armand Scarf wearing their best Zotzi outfits, he goes up. But oh no, he turns left at a very dangerous angle. That was a close one. 
The XJ is next, and Lofty lets rip. But he also runs out of steam. Down goes the Cherokee, and Lofty takes another slightly more enthusiastic run at it. But the result is the same, so Lofty decides to give it a skip. Again, me and the, the old man, we're battling up the last piece because the front legs get tired. <laughs> Louis and the powerful Triton go for broke next. And by Jove, they make it up at the first attempt. That was pretty good driving. Meanwhile, Chart and Armand had been plotting in the background and have come up with a cunning plan to show this June who really is boss. The plan? Floor it, baby, and don't lift for nothing. Yeah, drop him, drop him. With the day's action done and properly dusted, a brief break from the action and some words of desert driving wisdom from Uri Adventures' Dani van Iever, or Yuckles, as he's better known at campfires around the world. Stick with the basics. Stick with the basics. Straight up, straight down. No funny stuff. As the driver's progresses, you, you step up a bit every day. It's, it's amazing to see how people learn to drive in sand and gain experience within days. I think the most difficult challenge will be battling against themselves and see how they progress and see how they, how they do it. Okay, this is day two, challenge number one. Let's see what the guys can do with this one. Louis Triton V6 is the first to tackle this test and it's not so high. It's just extremely soft. He gives the Mitsubishi plenty of right foot and over she goes, no worries. The cool old Jeep Cherokee XJ is next, but oh dear, something doesn't sound quite right with the straight six motor. The Jeep grinds to a halt. Lofty takes another run at it. But again, it runs out of steam, bogging down. There definitely seems to be an issue with the engine too. Lofty and the XJ finally make it over and out of the challenge. The other teams didn't attempt this obstacle, preferring to save their brave for much bigger dunes to come. But on the way to challenge four, more drama. That's Anton and his Jeep, the latter buried in the sand up to its chassis. With the help of Mr. Steering Wheel Lover Chart Skierpers, the Jeep is extracted in a jiffy. This afforded tour guide Yuckles the ideal opportunity to share some cool recovery wisdom. First, you get two Jeeps to burrow themselves into the sand until they're lying on their bellies. Over to Yuckles. So what we're going to do is I'm going to attach a rope here in the middle, in the center point, right here. And then I'm going to start to pull with the third vehicle. So what you're going to do, Werner, you're going to go in first gear low range, you're going to go forward, you reverse, okay, reverse, and as you start pulling, you steer lightly to the left, and I'm going to pull here in the center, okay, so we're going to use the triangular forces, and you'll see how the vehicles will pop out of the sand. Right, so we could make a joke about how many Toyotas you need to recover two Jeeps, but we won't. Let's rather head to the shops for the last ad break. On the other side, on the last day, the dunes get even bigger. A young lady gets rather terrified. A dead Land Rover is driven. And we find out who comes out tops in the Battle of the Dunes. quite uh, like a steep up, very high. So let's give the guys a go. Let me see what they can do on this obstacle. I think this one is gonna take some guys out. Let's see what's happening here. 
First up is Lofty in his Cherokee, which seems to be running on all six cylinders again. His first attempt is cautious, and he grinds to a halt near the crest. A second attempt then, and it's full speed ahead for the Cherokee. And up she goes. Louis and the sweet-sounding Triton are next. And they make it in one time and all. The lads are all getting into the groove now. Time to move on to something, well, bigger. Anton and his Cherokee CRD tackle this daunting climb up a steep dune first. After saving up some brave, Anton is set on getting the diesel-powered Jeep up the dune. But he doesn't come close to the crest, not even after three attempts. So dune expert Yuckles has a go. So still no cigar for Anton and his Cherokee. Soon after, the Cherokee's automatic gearbox went into limp mode and Anton had to give all the big dunes a skip. The Mitsubishi Triton is next and Louis lets rip, flooring the V6 engine. He gears down just at the right moment and he's over. Lofty and his Cherokee XJ also made it over, so the guys were really getting the hang of this. But then, on the way back to camp, the group came upon what is said and claimed to be an old Land Rover that died here. In a nostalgic moment, the group decided to give the old Landy one last ride into the sunset. <laughs> With the battle part done, the last day saw the group head out to Sandwich Harbour. To get there though, they had to use all the sand driving experience gained over the previous days to navigate their way through the dunes. Let's take in some sights and sounds of the journey before we get to the infamous Long Drop Dune Challenge. And so the group arrived at Sandwich Harbour. Before moving right along to Long Drop, this infamous dune is massive. First you have to go down a long 38 degree slip face, then while you're still heading down, the guide says go, go, go over the radio and you have to floor it. You can't lift either, otherwise you won't make it up the next dune. So 4x4s get airborne at around 120 kilometers in the hole. It's a real challenge of bravery and skill. By now, all the drivers were seasoned sand experts, so they got through okay. But then Werner decided to drive up that slip face, and he also found himself a passenger. prizes then. And in third place was Anton Burdenstein, who despite the limitations of his Cherokee, did his best to conquer the Narmid. 
And in second place, Lofty in the Cherokee XJ. Lofty and the old man, as he calls the XJ, did an outstanding job in the challenging conditions. And the winner is Louis and his Mitsubishi Triton V6. And that's that for 2015. If you want a piece of the Battle of the Dunes action, visit www.battleofthedunes.com for all the dates and details for 2016. For now, it's over and out from us. Cheerio! We learned a lot and um, learned the capability of our vehicles, which was impressive. And yesterday was amazing again. It's all I can say, it's absolutely amazing. And I recommend it to everybody to do it at least once in, the, in their life. Thank you very much for Battle of the Dunes. Um, some of the obstacles were very, very tight. And for me, a bit steep and tough, but it's amazing, amazing four days in my life. And I will be definitely back next year. It was awesome. I would really, really recommend it to anyone. And uh, the scenery is out of this world. And uh, I think anyone who's got the guts to do the dunes, go and do it. <laughs>